Yo, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the best way to play Nintendo Switch games on your PC in 2025, and that is with Ryujinx Emulator. What I won't be showing you in this video is how to back up your key prod keys and firmware from your Nintendo Switch, nor will I be showing you how to back up your game ROMs and update ROMs for use with the emulator, because those are the games that it loads. I will mention these ROMs should be in the format of either XCI, NSP, NSZ, XCZ, or NRO. Uh, from my experience though, NSP files are just the best, and it's what I prefer to work with. With that out of the way, let's get to the setup process. So first up, you actually need to go grab Ryujinx from uh, the link in the description, from getryujinx.app. We just want to scroll down until we see latest build. You can find the latest stable release here. Click that here button and it'll bring you to the latest stable release. From here, just grab whatever version you need. In our case, it's going to be the Windows 64 bit. Just click on that. And from here, we save as to wherever you want to save it to. In my case, it's just going to be my desktop. With that nice and downloaded, we can go minimize our browser and then extract the Ryujinx zip file into its own folder. From here, once we got the folder, we double click to open that, drag this publish folder out, and that will be our Ryujinx folder. So we can go delete this one and then rename this one Ryujinx, just like that. Once we're in there, we double click and make a folder. So we're going to right click, hit new, then folder, and call it portable, all lowercase. From here, double click ryujinx.exe, and it should boot up right away with no real major issues. Might give you a warning. It says warning keys not found, and we'll go fix that in a second. Uh, and it's pretty simple to fix that actually once we're up in here. First off though, I'm going to hit uh, options and then where it says show console, I'm going to toggle that. So now the console won't be up and running and it's kind of kind of like scary. It's really intimidating seeing the console running like that. But well, that'll never run again. Uh, from here, we just do actions, then install keys, install keys from keys or zip. And once we're over into our area where we have our prod and title keys, we just select our prod keys and hit open and then hit yes, and boom. Then actions, install firmware, install from directory, and just select either the folder or zip folder with all your firmware files and let it do its thing. Just like that, we should be good to go on that front. From here, I'm gonna go configure a few things in Reusions itself to help things run better. Uh, first off, manage user profiles. I'm actually gonna go make a profile to be used by games. Uh, so I'm just gonna call this like gamer. And then you can either take a normal picture or hit set profile image and select from my avatar to use one of these switch like official images, which is pretty cool. You can go use like I don't know, generic question block. You can change the background color to whatever you want. You can have a red question mark block and then hit save and go select that. Whatever is selected blue here is the save profile being used. From here, uh, all we gotta do is hit options and then settings. And we're gonna go change a few different settings. Uh, for example, if your stuff is not already in dark mode, you can go change the theme to dark. You can change any of the other settings here. I leave them all as default. For game directories, I just hit add right here and then add whatever folder has all your game ROMs in it. In my case, they're on the desktop, so I'm gonna select the desktop just like that. You could also auto load DLC and updates, and I'm gonna do that as well. We're gonna hit add. And just like before, we're gonna go select our desktop just like that. You can also go over here and disable Discord rich presence so that it doesn't show what game we're playing on Discord. From here, go to input and we can go change our input device from all keyboards to my pro controller that I connected. And from here, it's generally pre-configured, but if it's not, you can change any button you want to change here. For example, if I press A on A, you can see A is A in this case because it's just a switch controller. Even motion controls are checked off and enabled because the switch pro con has gyro capabilities. And from here, you can save a profile. You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to call this ProCon because it's my Pro Controller. And then hit the Save Profile icon. I will also mention if you're playing Mario Odyssey specifically and probably other games too, you generally need to set the dead zone to 0.25, at least from my experience. Otherwise, things will not work correctly. 
So that's just a word of advice. It's super hard to set precise numbers like that. I'll just leave it at 0.26 for this demonstration, change it later. Uh, you can change some other stuff like the system, you know, the amount of RAM, the dedicated RAM it uses and things like that. Generally don't need to mess with any of this. CPU, you can do that. Graphics. Right here, I'd recommend setting things to Vulkan instead of OpenGL, and then make sure it's actually using your proper GPU, not your built-in GPU if you're on a laptop like me. Uh, from here, you can set the resolution scale. Generally, 1080p looks amazing, and it's already pretty rough to run some games with that. Uh, mainly talking about the ones that barely run on Switch are, of course, going to have a hard time running on your computer. Aspect ratio, I like stretch to fit window, so that it actually stretches with the window. And everything else, I just leave as default, because the defaults are great. Audio, I'd also heavily recommend turning down the audio to, like, 15 or so, because it's way too loud for my previous experience. And from here, here we hit apply and then OK. You can see our games are loaded. Sonic Mania with version 1.0.4. And then Crash Bandicoot version 1.2 with DLC. If we go right click, we can actually manage these things and toggle them off or on as we want. So you can right click, manage DLC, and you can literally just toggle them like this, just on and off very easily. Uh, if you want to change the version, you just right click and then manage title updates. And we can literally change to not having an update version and having updated just at will, which is super useful, especially if you do any type of modding. Uh, or use any type of mods. A lot of mods are only compatible with certain versions of games. But yeah, if we go boot up Sonic Mania, for example, game should just work out the box. No real problems, no real issues. Let me actually record audio for you guys. There we go. And you can see, I mean, everything is just working beautifully out the box. Game looks beautiful, runs beautiful, is beautiful. My controls are, of course, working. Game has autosave, and yeah, I mean, that's Sonic Mania up and running, get a medium mode, and just like that, things are working. You can now stop and exit our emulator, because we can go open the other game for demonstration. That's Sonic Mania working, here's Crash Bandicoot working as well. Almost every game I've tried with this emulator has just worked out the box. It is a bit more resource intensive than other Switch emulators. Like it, it uses a bit more processing power to actually run things, but you will never have the same visual bugs or anything else that other emulators will have. You can see right here, Crash War Bandicoot's about time. Um, Activision, which is just so crazy that they just own Crash Bandicoot, they own Rareware. Like, the amount of things owned by, by Microsoft at this point is getting a little ridiculous, honestly. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about games running on the Switch emulator. And, I mean, yeah, this game will be running, will be working well. You can also turn off a little status bar on the bottom, which shows, like, your volume, if you're docked, if it's compiling shaders. What that basically means, like, a one-time load thing, where the first time it loads something, it has to compile a bunch of shaders, but once it's loaded, once it, like, works well, uh, then you'll never have those issues again. Oh, what? Did I accidentally decline? Do I have to go all the way down the bottom? Sheesh. I'll just go to the end of this. I forgot all about this. It's been a hot minute since I played this game. I just figured it was a good game for demonstration. There we go. Hit for AAA. Alright. But yeah, uh, basically compiling shaders, like, the first time you load an area, the first time you load something, it kind of, like, saves uh, some files to help that the next time it loads, it'll just load super smooth. The Switch does this just ahead of time, like it comes with the game, uh, but emulators have to do it every time the game's kind of loading in and running. But yeah, uh, that's that's everything up and running. You can see the game is running smooth, the game is running well. It's running a little bit slow because it's compiling shaders, but the second it is done compiling shaders, the game goes crazy, crazy smooth and just works. Uh, there's not really much else to say. Let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns in the comments below. And uh, hopefully you guys have fun playing your Switch games on either your, you know, your PC, your Steam Deck, whatever PC variants you are playing on. Hopefully you have fun with that. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.